Tennessee not considered a top tier national championship contender? Here we go. What the H? What the? What was he thinking? Release the hounds. The Dave Hooker Show. <laughs> Keep cool. A presentation of offthehooksports.com. Oh, what the H today brought to you by Bassie Lawn and Garden. What the H? Why would you buy your industrial or commercial lawn products from anywhere other than Bassie Lawn and Garden? Go to Bassie.com to learn more. Bassie Lawn and Garden Man Alive. It's worth the drive. So Tennessee named a tier two national title contender per CBS Sports. Here's why it qualifies for what the H? <sighs> The, 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 there is only one team on tier number one. It is the Georgia Bulldogs right now. The same way in the middle of Alabama's run with Nick Saban, it was them and everybody else. The old argument was, would you would take the field or would you take Alabama? That's where Georgia is right now. So to me, everybody's tier two, but a lot of other teams were tier two as well. So I find the whole concept of having multiple teams on the first tier, and I would like for you to run those teams down as a little bit absurd to be right on, to be real honest with you. So what are the teams that CBS sports had on the top tier? Okay. So on the top tier and for anybody who wants to check this out, I'll give it a shout out real quick. This is Chip Patterson's 100 days out college football names, games, storylines to follow just 100 things. So among those things are the teams in the national title contention. Georgia's at the top for them. Just below is Alabama, then Michigan, then Ohio State, then LSU, then USC. Then here's what really gets under my skin. Is okay, the last so let me let me be let me be clear. Who is tier one? Who is on the, the all the of first? those are tier one? All okay, tier one. Repeat them again because this this is strange to me. And I know he's going by odds in Vegas, which I lean on, but repeat those again, please. Okay, so Georgia's number one at the top. And then Alabama, then Michigan, then Ohio State. Now, I get your point. There should just be a tier one and nobody else. But if you were going to do a tier one and then a tier above Tennessee after that, I'm fine with Alabama, Michigan, and Ohio State. I would probably give Ohio State better odds than Michigan. I don't know about you. But I, I know Michigan's won the last two. But I just – Ohio State has more talent. Okay, people that know me would never call me this. But if you want to call me this, go ahead on the message board. I – uh, call me Homer Dave, but given the schedule and what Tennessee has returning, I believe quite quite firmly that they're right on par with the other teams as far as potential to win a national championship that aren't named Georgia. Well, let me make your head explode then, because here's okay. where my head exploded. Okay. So just just below them were LSU and USC. I'm okay. I'm, I'm actually still okay with that. Here's where my head explodes. Texas, Florida State, and Clemson are in Tier 1. And then you get to Tier 2 with Tennessee. Let me repeat that, guys. Texas, Florida State, and Clemson are Tier 1. And Tennessee is Tier 2. I did my Florida State rant last week. I think it's time I do a Texas rant at some point. They have no business being a Tier 1 title contender. This is laughable to me. No, you've got uh, Quinn Ewers that is is decent, is okay, but th this Texas team should have beaten a, an Alabama team when they were trying to find their way, Alabama was, because they didn't have the skill position players that they were used to. And I don't see Texas being anywhere close to potentially winning a national championship. They might in 2024 or beyond, but this doesn't feel like the year to me. No, not at all. And here's my thing. So I got no issues with programs that run pro style offenses that kind of run the standard pro style and standard, you know, defense, you know what I'm talking about? Those pro minded coaches, Steve Sarkeesian, Kirby smart, Nick Saban, they're all in that mold. W wouldn't you I say? I'm going to miss them a little bit to be real honest with you. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, <laughs> so Sarkeesian's in that mold. The thing when you run those offenses, though, they are more dependent on Jimmy's and Joe's than any other type of offense. Does Texas really have? Yeah, does Texas really have the Jimmy's and Joe's to compete with Alabama and Georgia right now? 
Uh, no, no. And even with the transfer portal, you can flip a roster faster than ever. But if it's they're not comparable to Alabama, who took a dip in talent. I mentioned the skill position players other than Bryce Young last year. So they took a, a dip. And I still don't think Texas is as talented as Alabama. I don't think Texas is as talented as Ohio State. Travis says, I bet Dave's mortgage that Michigan will never win a title under Har Harbaugh. I agree with that, but I don't think Texas is as talented as Michigan right now based off recruiting numbers that we have in analytics. I don't understand the love for Texas. I sort of kind of can see it for Clemson, although I don't think they'll ever recover from having a second head coach in Brent Venables. That's just what I feel about Clemson. Um, and I don't What's understand. John Chavis, would you say? More like David Cutcliffe. Like a, yeah. But, but Cutcliffe is cut football. out to be a head coach. Cutcliffe was head coach material. Venables, I don't think, is head right. coach material. Okay, well, yeah, we'll find out. But he got the job, at least. He got a head coaching job. John Chavis never got the job. So, anyway, I, I think that Cutcliffe was a better coach than Chavis. I think that uh, basically Tennessee had two head coaches on their staff for a number of years. So, I think that Clemson had that. They've lost that with Venables at least head coach worthy, if not one of the most solid defensive coordinators in the nation. I don't think they're going to have that again. Florida State, tell me, explain the love for Florida State because when we had a production meeting at 5 a.m. this morning and then I followed it up studying their, their roster, certainly they've got good quarterback play. Certainly you would think they're going to be better and trending the right way, but a national title contender? As of 2023, I can't figure out what I'm missing. You're not missing anything. You are right to believe that Florida State is being massively overrated. I talked about this last week. I said it for years. For the past quarter century, Florida State has been the new Notre Dame. Media members go out of their way to prefer Florida State. Look, they covered for Jimbo Fisher when Jimbo Fisher was running the program into the ground with discipline issue after discipline issue after discipline issue. And he and, quit on recruiting because they wouldn't build him the facilities he thought he needed. Yes. Yes. And also, there was a lot of cover run for Jameis Winston. Forget the rate charge is bad enough because that was that was horrible on its own. But how many other incidents did he get involved in? And he still that Dave, let's be honest. No other quarterback would have won the Heisman under that scenario in 2013. How many I mean Peyton Manning lost out on the Heisman because of a 1996 trainer incident that happened. And so they don't usually, but, but Jameis Winston gets the break and he wins the Heisman. So they, they run cover. They've been running cover for FSU because of the goodwill Bobby Bowden bought. I'm going to point this out. Not only did they not beat a ranked team last year, they went three and three against division one schools with a winning record. How is that? Uh, I'm a national title. I'm a tier one national title contender a year later. Yeah. I'm now with you. I don't, and I kind of was surprised when you said that Florida State was anywhere on the level of just beloved and a media darling like Notre Dame. And I'll still argue that Notre Dame's slightly ahead, but I'm beginning to join you that it's at least in the ballpark of comparability because there is, I mean, that, that team is not ready to win a national championship. That team is not ready to make a four-team playoff. Um, again, I, I, I mentioned Michigan, Ohio State, Georgia, of course, Alabama are in better position than those schools. So to me, everybody's second tier and Tennessee's one of those second tier teams because of who they have returning and because the schedule that lines up for them. They have a chance to improve throughout the season thanks to some well-placed mm, sort of patsy games. So yeah, I think the I think everything lines up really well for Tennessee. And to have them second tier is fine as long as you have them with everybody else except for Georgia. That's the way the tiers should wrap up. See, I, I would break with you. I would be okay if you want to have a tier either with Georgia or just below Georgia ahead of Tennessee with Ohio State and Michigan and Alabama, just because it's Alabama, but then Ohio State and Michigan because look, but the winner of Ohio State Michigan is going to the college football playoff. There's just no debate. They're not, there's nobody else in competition <laughs> with them. And, and so that's why I'm I'm okay with that. USC, I kind of get only because again, who's in the Pac-12? We know what Lincoln Riley can do. He's got an easy road in the Pac-12. And and 
and then the, the 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 border would be LSU, who I'm very high on. But there's that's me being high on them on just my own gut and my own analysis, not based in where they should be.